everybody, it's Kat Kelby here, and I am joined by the most awesome dog photographer in the world, back for part two of our Q&A. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me welcoming the amazing, the fabulous. It's what happens when a unicorn, a <laughs> leprechaun, and a four-leaf clover have a baby. <laughs> That's right, it's Kaylee Greer. Yay! Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Scott. I'm so oh, excited to be well, here. We're, we're very excited to have you here. Now, you're here on a secret mission. Secret mission. So she is shooting a secret job while she's in town. I'm I can't so tell you excited. what it is, yes. but I know what it is, but I can't share it with you. But let me tell you, it's as big as jobs get. <laughs> now, this is from a woman who has uh, her shot on the cover <laughs> Of the brand new National Geographic Pets? Uh, Nat Geo Wild. It's Nat a new Geo magazine Wild. that kind of goes hand in hand mm -hmm. with their network. Nat yeah, Geo Wild. who's on the cover? Is that your is that your shot? My shot. That's right. Unbelievable. As big as that is, this is maybe bigger. Oh, Scott, thank you. So I want anyway. to keep coming back here. It's oh. so good for my ego. Oh, thank come you. on. <laughs> hey, I, I think the things that you're doing are pretty good for your ego. <laughs> so anyway, we're very excited to have you here. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to, to have you on, of course, be not just to mention the fact that you were in our backyard, which is great, but uh, we there were so many questions that we did not get to yeah. uh, on the last show. And so we, we had all kinds of topics that we could have done, but I thought, you know what? People just had so many questions, um, and afterwards, we're actually going to do we're going to do a little interview with you. So we're going to do ten questions with you afterwards, after the show, and we'll post it online. And it's just about you. I they're, love it. They're yeah. just like you know, who does your hair? That's a good question. Like that. A lot of questions like that. It's like a like trade that. secret, though. It is, though. I know. So it's <laughs> and a lot of secrets. There's a lot of mystery surrounding Kaylee, if you notice. A um, couple of important things before we get going. First, Kaylee, let's display our cups. We're very excited oh my about gosh. these. I was. It even has real water in it. Yeah, these are like real. Well, oh, it's, no, no. It's, it looks like water. Anyway, yes, these are very exciting. <laughs> these are the Mike Cabasi inspired. Whoop, whoop. Only asked us for <laughs> five years. The grid's been on the air to please get cups that have a logo on it. Let's drink. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. I turned it pink. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> anyway, so we have the cups. Uh, number two, I'm pretty excited. This uh, Sunday, uh, I'm shooting the NFC Championship game in Atlanta between the Falcons and uh, the Packers. So I shot last Sunday, and I showed you guys, I think, pictures last week from that. Um, so I'll be up there on Sunday shooting, and you know who else is going to be there? Rob Foldy. Do you, you know Rob Foldy. Foldy? I know Rob Foldy. Rob Foldy's I know his dogs. Rob Foldy's going to be there. Yeah, you know his dogs, I don't you? I know everybody. So Rob's going to be there, and uh, Winston Hendrickson, our buddy, is going to be there shooting. And, of course, we're shooting with the, the Falcons team, and we're going to get all our assignments, and it's very scary. But um, we're really looking forward to it. That's going to be big. So I do want to show you something real cool. We have some giveaways. I've got to tell you about those, and we're going to get to your questions, and we're going to get to some shout-outs. But I want to tell you something cool that I tried at the game. So I tried a thing called the Tether Tools Case Air. This is it here. So this is my remote camera rig, and I bet Juan will zoom in on it because he's very zoomy. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I just want to show you this is my remote camera rig. So we've got a Platypod Pro Max on the bottom. Hey, by the way, we're giving away one of these today. Right? One of these right here. In fact, somebody on Twitter just asked me, what's the name of that thing you use to put your camera on? This is it. Platypod Pro Max. Here, I'll give you the... Tilted view, all right? Then I've got, this is actually a three-legged thing. Have you heard of them? I have. They are, they're awesome. They're from the UK. And they, this is one of their little ball heads. This is their, I think it's called Airhead, A-I-R-H-E-D. But it has another word, like Bob or something. Anyway, it's a very, very small <laughs> ball head. And then uh, there's my camera. And on top, this little thing that looks like a matchbook, that is the Case Air. This is a wireless tethering system. So it allows you to take photographs and shoot from your phone or your iPad. Have the images go in there. You can go straight to the web and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's run, it makes, it creates its own little wireless network and then you have an app and then you just launch the app and you can take pictures. I don't know why I'm launching the app, but <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna launch it just for fun. And then it, it detects the little wireless network and you can just take pictures of whatever. You can do a uh, time lapse, you can just take pictures. So what I did was I set it up for a goal line stand. So I set it up right on the goal line. This is not designed, by the way, for football. It was never designed for football. It has <laughs> nothing to do with football. And if I told the people at Tether Tools, hey, I'm gonna take your thing to a football game, they'd go, you know, it's not really built for that. <laughs> but it worked like it a boss. It worked like a boss. <laughs> um, there's a couple limitations at it because it, your images have to move from here to your phone or whatever. Um, on wireless. Yeah. And so gotcha. if you if you go as they're hiking the ball, 
you got to wait for all those to see if mm -hmm. you got the shot. So there are some limitations, but there's also some advantages. But really, I got this for other stuff. The reason I wanted to get a case air was to be able to do like behind the bride, like a little hidden camera back oh, there yeah. and be able to fire just the right moment Less and intrusive, to be though, able like... to use, you know, in the studio for behind the scene shots. And I mean, there's a million reasons why having wireless tethering is awesome and just to use it to shoot in a studio. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, that's fantastic. All right. Okay. So that, that was just a really little brief thing about that because I had some questions about it. What are our giveaways today? Why we've got some fantastic ones. Thank you for asking, Kaylee. You're very How welcome. about <laughs> we're both going to hold one of these because we have two. Look. It is a Lens Pro to go gift certificate. $50, and you can go rent some cool stuff, some cool photography stuff. Do you know, these guys are kind of near me. They're located in Massachusetts. They are, right? And I've been there a couple times. They have nice studios, right? They have right? such a cool, like, headquarter location. It's so cool in there. And I've actually never people. been, but I've seen pictures, and it's very cool. But they're super cool people. So we're going to be wait two of these, and we're going to give away my book that is released. When is it released? Friday. The Elements 15 book. Scott, I didn't even know you wrote an Elements book. Well, thank you, Kaylee. I did, actually. That's right. <laughs> and it's coming out Friday. You know what this is? This is like the 10th or 11th one of these. But anyway, it's got all the new stuff. And, you know, photographers are doing things different, right? Because that's how photographers are. So I did different stuff in the book. And this is kind of based on today's, like, you know, workflow. And it comes out this Friday. Very exciting. Very unique. Very unique. All right. Sam's here. Sam, how you doing? Sam is our studio audience today. Hey, Sam. How's it going? Do you know Kaylee? <laughs> you guys have met? <laughs> Once or twice. You know, you guys had the most beautiful Christmas card. Can I tell you oh, that? Oh, thank you. That was like, I was just like, oh my gosh, that is just, it was really beautiful. It, it's it, like the first time in like 10 years it hasn't been just my dog on it. Do and you I have a picture of it? Oh, you, don't, you don't even have a computer, hmm, do you? I didn't bring, I mean, I do have my computer with me, but... Um, I don't know if I have a picture of it. I might it's, be able to dig it up for you by the end of this. It's so, it's we can, so. We can dig it up. <laughs> hey, you know, what, you know what I have for you at the end of the show today, by the way? Picture of Meredith. All right. So I love whenever, it. we always talk about Meredith and we never get to show a picture. Well, we threw one on the screen last week. I'm not kidding. In the history of the grid, you've never seen an image on screen a shorter amount of time. <laughs> it was like a strobe light. It was Meredith and it was gone. Meredith is like the brains behind the operation. She is. It's she's pretty, in the control she's room. Important. She's fully in control. She's She likes the power of control, by the way. She's a control <laughs> freak. Anyway, so we're going to show a, a, a brief picture, maybe longer than last week, of, of Meredith and a brief story about the photo. That's coming up at the end of the show. Worth staying around for. So we got some giveaways, and we got questions. Now, we have to do a couple of shout-outs. I'll do one, and you do the next one, okay? Okay. We'll split them up. All right. Roger from Indy says, good, e good afternoon from Indianapolis. Peter T. Am I saying it right? Peter. Peter. Well, you know. We know him. <laughs> Greetings from London. Hi, Peter. I hope I'm saying it right. Sorry. All right. We got <laughs> Howdy from Texas from Shadonorous. Got to be that, right? Like, I'm glad you got that one. That one's not super easy to say. <laughs> Josh Vassar. Hey, from negative 20, Alaska. Yeah, it's That's 20 degrees below. Something. That's quite miserable. Have you ever shot like dogs and like, well, wait a minute, you're from Boston. Yeah. You but, have had to. Yeah, for sure. I was going to ask, like, when does my camera stop functioning? Like, what temperature is that? It's but 20 actually, degrees below. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think that's exactly the number. I think I've done like, yeah, maybe just maybe zero, maybe. Do you burn through batteries like mad when it's really cold like that? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm so cold that I can't even really function and remember where I am. And my hands freeze like immediately. Uh, I don't really <laughs> look at the battery or think about it that much. I guess I keep it quick. All right. Shelter Dog Photography says, wow, Kaylee is awesome. Oh, thank you. I'm going to read the next one, too, because, you know, congrats on the Nat Geo cover. Oh, thank Seriously. you so much, Lori. Thank you. It For was, pets, like how much um, bigger does it get? Totally surreal. Right, right. Crazy moment. All right, you get to read Alex one because it's a good one. Alec. Aberdeen, Alex, Scotland. Yes. Aberdeen. That's wow. a place I want to go to. All right, we're going to mispronounce this one, but I'm going to try as best I can to, to Aaron Anderson. Hello from Derbyshire. Derbyshire. Yeah, I can't be Shire. They okay. never pronounce the Shire. Oh, you're right, you're right. right? That's fair. If we were Americans, which we that are, would we would definitely say be Derby Shire here in the United right. States, but <laughs> then everybody in the UK just cringes when we say that. So I'm going to say it's Derbyshire. He says, I yeah. look forward to this every week and the webcast. Best education so every true. week. Thank you, guys. All right. I'm going to do these last ones really, really quick. Uh, Susan says, hi, Kaylee. Loved your last class. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching it. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> you played All right. You get to grab one here. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. We got Colorado Springs. Judy Wright from Colorado Springs. Yes, she's at work. Shh. <laughs> Judy. Uh, oh, you won one of the 
giveaways. That's awesome. I didn't even know anybody really won those things. Amazing. Yeah, we don't we don't always <laughs> give stuff away. A lot of times we say we give stuff away, but then we don't. We just keep it ourselves. That's right. That's uh, right. At the end of the show, Jen decides who gets what. And, and Jen's like, I want that thing. I'm like, okay, you just take it. We do yeah. that all the time. No, cool. Congratulations. That's all awesome. right. And we got our first questions coming in. So today is a question, a question and answer day, and we already have some questions yeah. coming in. But just real quickly, we have Agi, I'm going to say, from Italy. Uh, bonjour, no. Uh, or would it be, would it be something else? Uh, it's no. late in the day. No, bonjour. No, bonjour. No. Isn't that kind of morning? Grazie mille. That's like thanks a million. There you I go. Think. <laughs> All right. And uh, let's see. Uh, and Joe says, "I'm so glad I caught you." Tweet. I saw. Uh, I saw the last time she was on talking about dog photography. I wish she would cheer up. <laughs> yeah, she's. You know what's interesting? Can I tell you something? This is. I'm just going to look at Juan's camera because that's where it's at, right? Okay. And this is this is interesting. When she's not on. She's very like super mellow. She's like this. She's like, I'm like, hey, you got the Nat Geo cover. She's like, yeah, <laughs> it was an honor, you know, but it's just another photo. It's just another magazine. I'm like, so how you been? She's like, I'm getting by. <laughs> Can I tell you something? No kidding. So we're all sitting in our offices. We're in a meeting and we hear an explosion of laughter and fun. And we're like, well, Kaylee's here. <laughs> Kaylee's in the house. We all left. We all left the meeting I to come out and say hi. Because she's in the lobby and it's just, it's like confetti. It goes wherever she goes. Like, it's like, so she is, she is like this all the time. Oh. It's not just on screen. She's a very happy person. That was such a nice, warm welcome. Then Thank you. And it's very nice. I mean, when you're around happy people. Oh, look, look. Rob Foldy's here. Rob Foldy. Rob Foldy. He said hi, Sam. Sam. Yeah. Sam, it's hey, all you. Shout out to you there, Sam. <laughs> all right. Hi, Rob. All right. Stephanie's asking, what's the name of the remote I'm talking about? It's from Tether Tools, Stephanie. It is from Tether Tools. It's called Case Air, C A S E A I R. And it's this little bad boy here. It sits in your hot shoe. I'm going to show it upside down here. Well, I can just unplug it. It plugs right into the USB port on the side of your camera. There it is. Case Air. There it is. Very small, very, very lightweight. Weighs like nothing. Nothing. All right. Let's get to the Q&As. Yay. So, Johan, all right, who's all the way, we happen, even though he didn't say this, we happen to know that Johan is from uh, the Netherlands. Question to Kaylee. What do you do when you're doing a shoot and the owner keeps shouting at the dog? No, look here. No, don't do that. That's a thing. That happens. That is such a good question. I actually really struggle with this, too, because I have... I love dogs so much because they're, I feel like I can communicate with them and then people are a whole different level, um, you know, and so with the owners when they're um, kind of yelling at the dog it, to look here and do this and do that, it's so challenging because that takes the energy of the whole shoot and just really throws it off and it kind of stresses the dog out and the dog feeds off of that person's energy. So it's really important to kind of nix that right away. Um, I'm getting better at that. I mean, I think um, I'm getting better at kind of being... Uh, just really upfront and straightforward with the owners and saying, um, you know, I can sort of handle getting them to look where I need them to look. And I try to keep them involved and make them feel important by saying like, you know, most likely they're going to be most interested in you. Um, and if I need you, I will absolutely call you immediately. And I kind of joke that I'm probably going to need them eventually just to make them feel important. But then, you know, I'll take over that role of just making sure that I'm directing the dog. Um, because yeah, I used to let people get away with that for a while. I'd just let it go on and on. And then um, I realized that like hours were going by and I wouldn't get any photos and it would be miserable. So mm. I'm getting better at reeling it back in right, right away. But it, I did struggle with that for a while. But here's one thing you can try. And I've done, it's been very successful. If you have a dog owner and the owner starts yelling, take a rolled up newspaper, yeah. just roll up a newspaper and hit them. Just <laughs> pop them and go, Mr. Johnson. Bow. I should take like Stop. a spray bottle. Or spray bottle yeah, is good. It doesn't face. hurt as much though. <laughs> How about this? Spray bottle and then slap them one with a newspaper. Go see, <laughs> how's it feel? It's the ideal combo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I love this next question. It's, uh, have you ever tried to photograph a cat? And if so, how did it go? Good question. Yeah, I have um, a couple times. Sometimes when I shoot commercially, a lot of those clients want to see both dogs and cats because typically they're in the pet industry and not just with dogs. So I do have to photograph cats um, sometimes. And yeah, how it went is um, very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> if dogs are challenging, take it to like the whole uh, new level with cats um, because you can't necessarily tell a cat what to do or sort of put them in a space and say stick here or, or some cats can be manipulated with treats and toys a little bit but it's not as easy as it is with a dog um i did photograph a cat 
for one of the first times ever recently outside, because most of the times you have to stay inside with cats, um, which limits me in a lot of ways because I get I just love so much the like the natural landscapes of you know kind of the natural world so I got a cat outside and it was amazing and she was great but we had to have her on a leash and then it was in Florida so all of a sudden she started panting and when a cat pants you're like nope this is not supposed to happen cats don't pant um so we had to take her inside like immediately so that was challenging it was very quick it was much quicker than a dog shoot probably had her out there for 15 minutes and then we're like whoop we better put her inside it's too hot <laughs> at least, uh, this is I'm, I'm probably pronouncing this right should honor us I mean wrong sorry uh, at least with cat photography the cats will ignore the <laughs> yelling owners <laughs> Yeah, cats, <laughs> cats, cats. Okay, uh, let's say, uh, let's see what else we got. Just lots of shout outs here. There's uh, uh, Eric Langley says, Hi, Kaylee. Just want to say hello from Friendship, Wisconsin. High fives. And Hi. whoops, we just missed one that went away there. Friendship, uh, Wisconsin. What a cool town. I know. Friendship. That's Come amazing. On. Nothing bad can happen. Sounds there. like where you'd be from. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Zura, z uh, Zarafka. Zarafka. Yeah. That's perfect. Hi. You, you must know that yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, wow, do. you pronounce that well, like a boss. Yeah, absolutely. And then she's the mom to the four dogs that are on the National Geographic. Whoa, well, she says, hi, sunshine. World, right? Yeah, she's the Daniel best. Daniel says, Kaylee, you are the best. Thanks for all the inspiration and amazing dog photos. Mm, this is like just a Kaylee Aww. love fest. Hi, guys. Yay, it's Kaylee. So glad I didn't miss this hi, from Kathy. Kathy. Hi, Kathy. All right, Jim Lacey says, 70 in Atlanta. Scott will see you at the game. All Yay. right. And then uh, Stephanie says, uh, so excited to see you, Kaylee. You are awesome sauce. I want to be like you when I grow up. Oh, what a sweetheart. Thank you. All right. And let's see. Okay. Here's a question. We have <laughs> buried in all the love uh, is a question. Tony Austin says, do you bring your own toys for the dogs or do you have the dog owner bring toys that the pet is interested in? Uh, both. I bring toys and treats and peanut butter and all kinds of things that I know if God forbid, there's nothing else to keep that dog interested and engaged than I have like the right tools to do it. But a lot of times, it's a good question because a lot of times the dogs will have some very special toy. I don't know if Maggie has something like this, but... Um, Maggie uh, doesn't care. <laughs> Maggie doesn't care about anything. <laughs> um, the, a lot of times they have like a very special toy, whether it's like a tennis ball or like a squeaky toy or something that's like their favorite. And so I will always ask the owners to make sure that they bring anything that's going to really motivate the dog. So a little of both. I have the owners bring it, but in case of failure on the owner's part, <laughs> I always have my own. Um, and honestly, the owners do forget to bring things like 50% of the time. So wow. I have both. Do you have like a little, do you have like a little, uh, you know, sometimes you see makeup artists with a little case yes, and they have all this stuff I in do. it. Do you? And, and it has a big dog on the outside and it, it says fetch. And then I always, there's a picture of my original dog that was the breath behind dog breath photography. Ah. He passed away about four years ago, but I have his picture on the outside kind of hanging on a little charm. So he's like always with me at every shoot. Um, but it, he's on my, that's my little treat bag that I call it. It's sort of my, my bag of magic tricks. Treat um, bag. Yeah. So I have that at every shoot. See, that would motivate Maggie the Wonder Dog. The treat bag. Maggie Maggie is totally not. She's not toy motivated. Okay. She's totally treat motivated. All right. That's uh, easier, let's actually. see. Michelle says hi from beautiful British Columbia, Canada. I love you, Kaylee, and inspiration. I love you back. Thank she, you for she watching. And she really does. <laughs> All right. You know, some people say that. She's not just saying that. All right. Wayne mm -hmm. wants to know: Have you decided on a setting for the Photoshop World Workshop? Ah, so, good question. So, you know, tomorrow they're actually looking at a, a – literally tomorrow they're doing a trip to Orlando. Uh, and yeah. I, that was one of the things on their agenda is the, they have okay. a line on a place that might be good, so they're going to go see it tomorrow. Oh, I love it. Okay. Uh, I think I met Wayne. I think I met Wayne at Photoshop World in Vegas. Well, there you go. I think I'm right. I hope I'm right. <laughs> Rob Foley. Rob Foley, of all people, says, Kaylee, great guest blog recently on the importance of personal work. Yes, it was. How do you approach finding a healthy balance or personal work versus and, and uh, a healthy balance between personal work and paid and commission shoots? Thank you for the compliments on the blog. I really appreciate it. I like labor through writing sometimes because it's so much comes out and then I have to edit down and it's always way too long still. So I appreciate everybody who read it because it was like the longest thing ever. Yeah, but it was great. It yeah. was really, really Thank great. You. Yeah, I, I specifically tweeted out, Thank you know, you so much. Yeah, this is really, really good stuff. It was something that every photographer yeah. needs to read because I thought you you presented a really great side that you don't always hear people talk about. Oh, thank you so much. Well, that means a lot to me, especially coming from you. But um, 
you know, I kind of noticed, like, going through my portfolio, I realized that, like, a good 50% of those photos are, like, personal work. Work that I went out and said, I want to create this. I want to make something magical and amazing and absolutely representative of what's in my heart and kind of what, you know, as cliche as it sounds, like, what sets my soul on fire when I look at a dog or, you know, if you're a landscape photographer or, you know, a baby photographer or whatever it is, the thing that makes you just kind of... Um, light up, you know, with, with joy and happiness. And um, I, I realized that, you know, for me, like with personal work, that's where, where it's at. That's where I feel that really special feeling. And sometimes it happens on client shoots, but a lot of times yeah. there's so many rules and regulations and you're shooting something you're proud of maybe, but it's not, it didn't come from your heart. Right. So I realized a, a lot of my personal work is like what had advanced me to these places where I was getting calls from these big clients who wanted me to shoot ad campaigns, et cetera. And they were always referencing back to these photos that I had made um, for, just from my heart, you know what I mean, that weren't made for a client. So I realized how incredibly important that was kind of early on in the journey, which I think was a really big um, key to getting kind of where I've gotten myself to at this point. I still have a long way to go, but um, but anyway, so Rob's question was finding a work balance, a healthy balance between client and personal work, which is honestly a quest that I'm still on, I think, at all times, because I maybe have like zero percent semblance of a personal life at this point in time which isn't great because you don't want to get burned out on the thing that's your job um but at the same time when it's also your passion um it's hard I think that reaching that point of burnt outness is going to be harder for me to reach because it is my passion so I'm so motivated by it um I do struggle with with that but um I guess a good, I, you know what, I'm really, I, I have to be just super candid. I'm probably not a good person to ask about a good balance between that because even when I'm on vacation, like I'm like, don't bring the camera, don't do this. I'm freaking out because there's a big sunset and I'm going to go run up here and borrow this person's camera and grab this person's dog and make it happen. I, I can't remember a time that I was like on a vacation and like didn't make a photo. So it's well, probably a plague in a way well, for me. But Here's the good thing. If you were to get burned out, you know how you recharge your battery? Hanging out with puppies. No, <laughs> no, you go to Friendship, Wisconsin. That's right. Just go for the weekend That's to Friendship, right. Wisconsin. You I come out of there it. like, what? what? <laughs> Greg, Greg wants to know if you've ever photographed bunnies. No, yeah, once. Um, not very often. It is a whole different ball game because, again, you, you really have to understand the animal. And I totally, admittedly, don't know bunnies and rabbits that well. However, when I volunteer at the shelter, they have um, dogs and cats and then gerbils and bunnies and barnyard animals. They have all kinds of animals. So they've had me do a lot of work with all the animals. Uh. I've done bunnies for the shelter, but only like two or three times. All righty. We are going to take a short break. When we come back, the awesomeness will continue. Our guest today is the most awesome dog photographer in the world. And by the way, that's pretty much undisputed. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. Don't go away. We'll be right back right here live on the grid. And I got this fancy. I got it. I've been here four times. I continue to learn new and fabulous things about photography and Photoshop and Lightroom. If you come here with one thing on your mind, you're probably going to end up leaving with interest in other areas. You want to stay in the know and stay on the cutting edge. This is the place to do it. Anyone that has a passion for creative things, photography, design, they attend Photoshop World. Hi, my name is Heather the Painter and I'm excited to be able to show you how to use Corel Painter 2017 to easily paint your photographs into beautiful paintings. In this course, you will learn how to clone with precision, how to build up freehand color, and then to refine with simple blending techniques. We'll talk about brush settings that can customize to your style and using the cloning engine. So please join me at kelby1.com to learn how to use Corel Painter 2017 to paint your photographs into beautiful paintings. Hey, we're back. Kaylee is still here, and which is awesome because oftentimes the guests will leave and Jen steps in. <laughs> All right. So uh, anyway, we are deep in the middle of part two of our photography uh, Q&A. Now, uh, I do want to mention, we, it's, you know, tomorrow we have a new class coming out and it is it is an amazing class. I know who taught it because I was the one that kind of got her, but I don't know the name. The You guys came up with a better name. Jen, do you know what the name of... What's tomorrow's class? It's with Stella, but it's called... Editing and Sequencing, Learning to Let Go. Editing and Sequencing, Learning to Let Go. Okay, so Stella Kramer uh, is someone that I hired years ago after getting referred to her. She is a 
a specialist at building portfolios for photographers. And so I, I loved, loved, loved her. I mean, she was, I cannot tell you how much I learned from Stella in a very, very, very short time. And she was just, I mean, honestly, she was just absolutely wonderful. And so I've been wanting to work with Stella uh, on a class for years. And we finally got together. We went to New York City. We filmed two different classes. The first one's coming out. And it is on sequencing and and editing. So basically what she's going to teach you to do is the order to put the images in your class, which ones make your portfolio, which ones don't. Can I tell you what the, besides Stella just being awesome, she's just an awesome person. She was an editor at Newsweek. She was an editor at Sports Illustrated. The best thing about Stella, besides her amazing knowledge, is she's not a photographer. Huh. She's a person that hires photographers. Yeah, well, you know what? And it's almost even more important to, it be, is. to it have is. that knowledge from that side. And all she ever does is is look at photos and look yeah. at photographers. And yeah. she's so good. And she tells it like it is because she's from New York. She tells you, this is how it's done. And this is what you do. And she's she's refreshing. And she's fun. And, and she is very smart and very, very sharp. And we are really excited to have her. I've wanted her for years. And, and she'll be doing this class. She's got a second class with us as well but Stella is That's awesome uh, she actually did a segment of one of our classes so if you watch Zach Arias Arias's class I think it was the five thousand dollar challenge she did a little a little clip inside it where she talked a little bit about some images and stuff everybody wrote in everybody's like oh, wow. oh my gosh yeah. you know so uh we're we're excited we, you know so anyway um I, I haven't seen the trailer for it do we have a trailer for it are we gonna play it today um, I don't know I haven't seen it I saw Juan working on it um, the graphic is amazing? It's amazing. Okay. It's anyway, amazing. we're very, uh, the, the class is up right now. So after the grid, don't leave the grid. We're not done. Go see Stella's class. After the I grid, go and see Stella's after, yeah, class. Yeah, don't leave us yet. But but Stella is awesome. So you went up you went up for that shoot. Jen actually went up to New York City for the shoot. And her exact words, she was texting me from, from the class. She's going, this is amazing. Aww. Stella is amazing. Oh, I'm so excited to yeah. see it. I'm going to oh, watch it. Oh, let me it. tell you. I need that. I have such a hard time going through it. Let me tell you. Alan Hess says, going to watch that class tonight. Need portfolio help. Yeah. I don't know, Alan. I hear you. Oh. Uh, Alan's Hi, pretty Alan. good. Hi, Alan. Alan has Alan's... the cutest boxers in the world. Does he? Oh, my God. Why are, you, so seeing, why are you seeing Alan with his pants off? <laughs> That is just, I gotta, I'm, 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 this is very whip. awkward. This is very, Sam, I'm sorry you were here, but this is very, this is very awkward. Why would you see him in his boxers? I mean, some things left unsaid. Okay, let's just leave that. All right, here we go. Justin wants to know, have you ever photographed dogs with your phone? And by the way, he adds, adds both of your classes were awesome. So Thank have you, you ever uh, done dog photography? Well, all the time. I mean, all the time. I look at my, uh, well, if my personal Instagram feed is literally just my dog with my phone. I feel like people think I have no friends. <laughs> it's just my dog and dog and dog and dog again. No, oh, Joshua. Um, but anyhow, uh, for a professional shoot, for a client, I can't say that I've ever photographed with my phone. Uh, however, like I said, in my personal life, all the time, I'm kind of trying to push my iPhone to its limits with, um, you know, just using the built in camera of course on there and then using editing software like Snapseed and stuff like that um, I do that quite a lot with is my dog. Is that your favorite editing app for your I phone? I mean I guess I'm not very well versed in editing apps because probably that's the only one. Oh that's a one. good one. That's a it's good the only one, one I have and I really yeah. like it. Yeah I mean it. many people feel it's the best one it's yeah. you know it's it's certainly one of the best. Yeah it's pretty it's pretty fantastic. Pull, you can pull the shadows up <laughs> kind of like it's, you're working with a raw image it's amazing and it's right. just a phone image. Stephanie says Stella. Yeah. All right, Bob from Boston uh, says, Ola from Boston, hi, Kaylee. We know Bob. We, hey, we, we had Bob? steak with Bob. We did. We had a big steak with Bob. <laughs> we had a steak the size of a car battery. That's true. All right. Um, <laughs> so uh, Roger from Indy, I know the answer to this one, but I will let you answer it. Roger wants to know, flash or natural light? Well, both. Right? Um, both. I... Well, I use, so in my portfolio, the main images that you see, a lot of the first ones, let's say the first five or so, sort of like my hero images, are a combination of flash and natural light. Of course, kind of balancing the ambient light and picking up that beautiful light that's happening naturally in the atmosphere and balancing that with uh, artificial light strobes on location. Um, however, when it comes to my private client shoots, 
Uh, believe it or not, I shoot about, I'd say 75% of those sessions, so they're two hours long, so an hour and a half of it anyway, typically is natural light. And then by the end of it, when the sky starts to get really beautiful, you know, hopefully a beautiful sunset starts to peek its head out, that's when I pull out the strobes. Um, so really, when it comes to my private stuff, it's more natural light than anything, but I do show selectively most of that um, kind of hyper real looking flash work because that's the stuff that sort of has set my work apart um, and gotten me, you know, jobs commercially and stuff like that. So both. All righty. Anonymous asked, is Stella's job only in New York City? Now, Stella lives in New York City, but I, I did all of my portfolio work personally with Stella over Skype. So we were Skyping. So you can hire Stella, oh, wow. you know, from anywhere. And uh, it Stella is not inexpensive. I will tell you that. But I will say this. It's worth every penny. I mean, it's like it's you want to hire Stella when you're serious, when you get to a point in your career where you're like, all right, you know, it's not like, oh, that'd be fun. It's like you're got to be serious. But I'm telling you what, she's just amazingly awesome. But you know what? You'll also just learn a lot. You'll learn a lot about just a lot. She's just I mean, I I took notes every time I just sat there just just because huh. it's just she's just awesome. Uh, uh, so let's see. We had some other questions here. Uh, John asks, uh, dogs are your friends. <laughs> oh, it's just a statement. It's a good statement. Dogs are your friends and often better at it than people. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, I'm true. friends with Rob Foldy. Maggie is a much better friend mm -hmm. than Rob More Foldy. More consistent, right? Rob Foldy is <laughs> kind of sketchy. But yeah, that's it consistently. <laughs> like Maggie is always nice to me. Rob's, yeah. he's 50-50. <laughs> All right, Francis, cannot wait to see Kaylee at Photoshop World amongst so many incredible instructors. What can we, so this is Fran's first Photoshop World. Oh, so get out. I thought I had assumed she'd been to plenty. Her, no, no. Her work is, is beautiful. No. Hi, Fran. But she says, what can we expect from your classes at Photoshop World? Oh, oh, that's exciting. Um, I am, I, as far as I know, um, doing a pre-conference workshop. That's correct. So that's awesome because that's like really cool because we'll get to go out with dogs, hands on and all together and hang out and photograph dogs. Um, and that will be the day, probably the day before Photoshop World starts, typically. Yeah, Yeah, and I didn't want to tell you, but we're actually going to have one cat there okay. as well. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. I'm just, <laughs> we'll just kidding. Like but a it's, a, it's a distemper, the cat with distemper. It's very, it's <laughs> an angry cat. It's a, and then you've got regular classes on the conference, yep. right? Yep, and then I'm going to be teaching two um, regular classes. One will be um, pretty kind of a straightforward tips and tricks um, on how to really get, like, knock it out of the park with dog photography and get the best dog photos that you can, whether it's just your own dogs, if you want to photograph your own dogs better, um, or if you want to start to think about getting into professional dog photography and offering it as a service to your clients. Um, so both of those things kind of will be covered. And then the other class I'm so excited about, is uh, kind of more it's in the kind of more in the inspiration track and it's it's more just kind of a story about um, how I got started and then talking about the things that I truly believe that you need to kind of do have or understand to become successful in this business um, and it's kind of cool because we'll go through my very early work like I think you'll see like the literal first dog shot that I ever took and see the progression from that all the way up till kind of what oh, I'm doing be today good. Yeah. and it, it makes you definitely feel less you know um, singled out in terms of a lot of people think oh my gosh you know I'll never get better at this and I and you kind of hate your work and um, you know, people are tough on themselves. They're on their own worst critics, oh, I think. Sure. And so if you see what I started with, you'll laugh at me, and then we'll all be friends. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, so just just so you'll know, Fran, uh, so this was this last Photoshop World in Las Vegas last year was your first one. Oh, my gosh, yes. And and she is literally, she's teaching with the all, I mean, we, we do put the world's best instructors mm. together. And those of you who've been to Photoshop World know we actually go and, and, uh, and, and seek out the very best people. And this was your first time there. And people lost their mind over your class. I Aww. read all of your evaluations Thank from you. all of your Aww. classes, and and you were just a superstar hit. And it wasn't it, it you were it wasn't just what you did on stage, but it's what you did around the conference. People just loved talking to you and meeting Aww. you and stuff, and they were inspired by your stuff. It was I mean it was a love fest. It was like Aww. you had your own conference. We actually thought about changing the name <laughs> to Kaylee World at one point because it's <laughs> like you took over the conference. It was awesome, but it was. It was in a great way. It was really great. And and so thank when we're putting the instructor roster together for this year, we're like, Kaylee's in. Who's Aww, next? And so you, you. you really I did feel, a I wonderful feel like job. I'm cry. Don't cry. My, I know. Has anyone ever <laughs> cried on the grid? Oh, yeah. Usually me. Okay. But sometimes I've had some, I made some people cry, but it was unintentional. 
Um, I feel like I'm going to cry. Thank you. That means so much to so, me. So Anonymous says, is that Zach Aries class still available? I watched Stella in that class and I was floored. Ah, yeah. that's where she was. Yo, I'm telling you. Um, yes, and that class is still, of course, online. Uh, Stephanie wants to know, can we see the cat shot you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Good question. Yeah. Maybe we can dig it up. Um, Sam, can you find that? Sam, we have my computer, Sam right? has can many things. He looks very confident, too. He's all like, oh, yeah, Let's I got that. Let's make some magic happen, Look, baby. Look, he's, he's pulling out his phone. He's not even going to a computer. Uh, yeah, it's on my Facebook, but how do we get it onto the screen is the question. All right. IG asks, uh, what, we'll work or, on it. Uh, what, 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 what light? What lighting and modifiers do you use? Are you using strobes? Are you using studio? I mean, a hot shoe flash? What do you use? Good question. Um, it kind of, it does vary at every shoot. I have um, fl off the camera flash, the speed lights, um, but mostly I use strobes. I have a couple different kinds. Um, Einstein, Palsy Buff Einsteins. Um, and then also, I just got a pro photo. Like, I, you ah! know what? Seriously, can I tell you something? I swear to you, I was just about to make the, the joke. Well, with the work you're getting, I bet you'll be using pro photos soon. And you right next to the next one inside of your mouth is I got some pro Do photos. You know what? I reached well, out. Well, there you go. I reached out to a, a, a buddy, Glenn Dewis, and asked him some. Oh, yeah? I mean, who else to ask about lighting, right? I know. So I asked him a whole bunch of stuff, and he had a lot of good stuff to say about many different brands, but I ended up settling on pro photo, so I also have um, a pro photo B1. Ooh, and the B1's great. Yeah. That's a great, great, great light. I've only light. taken it on like two or three shoots so far, but I'm so excited. Oh, it's great, right? Because just, there's no cord, there's no yes, cable, it's, it's just one it's piece. It's kind of like, I feel like it was built for us because we're on location it chasing built dogs for us. around. It's great. And we have these, you know, we have battery packs hanging off Whoop. of us and crazy. And it's crazy stuff with the pro photo. It's all it's built awesome. in. So uh, that. And modifiers, um, sometimes softbox, um, 42 inch, I think. Is that what we have? Yeah, that's all right. Something like that. And then a, a that 22. That about right. I think it's a 42 inch beauty, uh, sorry, softbox that we sometimes use. It's a 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time would be a beauty dish, a 22 inch beauty dish. All right, we got so many questions. We're going to zip up to the top. We're just going to crank through them. So here's the thing because we only have like 20 minutes left. We're going to have to, uh, what's the word, be, be concise with our okay, answers. All right. <laughs> and I want to know the answer to this one. Jim Lacey asks, are there any breeds you don't shoot? Kaylee. No, no, absolutely not. You, no, I love she's them open all. to any breed. Love them and all. don't even have to be dogs. All right, so um, what lens do you generally lose and what's up? Hey, you know, a lot of, I'm just going to say this. I want to plug your class, okay? A lot of the questions that you're asking, like, what lights do you use? What lens do you use? All that kind of stuff. If you go, she has two classes on Kelby One. If you're not a Kelby One member, you can go take the seven day or 10 day free trial and watch them. You can literally watch them tonight. All of those type of questions are answered there because she goes into everything. I mean, you, you'll know exactly what, I mean, she doesn't hold anything back in her classes. She tells you exactly how it is. You see the whole process. They're, they're really great. I mean, people are such fans of your classes because they are, they're very, they, you really feel like I'm showing you exactly how to do it. It's not like, well, I have secret stuff I do later when yeah, you're not right, looking. Right. No, she puts Aww, it all out there. Yeah. So, uh, but we're going to answer Marco's question anyway. So what lens do you generally use and what setup? Um, yeah, well, I shoot with a Canon 1DX. Uh, I also have a 5D Mark mm -hmm. III, but mostly it's the 1DX. It works very well for photographing very fast-moving subjects like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sports camera, but it works for dogs for sure. Uh, lens, I would say, like, when people look at my work, the one they usually are asking about is the wide-angle shots, and that's a 16 to 35. That's a great oh, one. Oh, but guess what I just bought? Oh. The new 16 to 35 no, or the, the 14? the 11 to 24. <gasps> I have one, but what? that is oh that God. is the greatest wide angle lens that's, ever made. That's what I Do you thought. know that it's the widest wide angle lens without being a fish without, eye? That's what I it's thought. It's the widest wide. Eleven is the widest wide angle ever it's made. It's a beautiful lens. Oh, full it's frame. beautiful. I just got that too. See, at the end of the year, December thirty first, I was like, is, oh crap, I need write offs. I got that to is, buy stuff. That is unbelievable. <laughs> the eleven to twenty four greatest ever. So I just got um, that for wide. Jennifer so we'll wants see. to know how long does it take from your photo shoot to the finished product to present to your client. So you shoot someone today. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds bad, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You do a, you do a shoot today. How long before you deliver the the finals to your uh, client? Well, it, um, let's say let's go with a very t like, typical scenario. Uh, seven days after the shoot, I put up a gallery for my client. At that point, they then have seven days to choose what they want to order. So that process right there is two weeks. Um, usually, they take until the very last moment <laughs> <laughs> to order. Um, and then once I get their order, that comes through on my website. I actually use Pixie Set, and then you can actually have there's a store built in, so they can do all their ordering online. It's perfect. It's brilliant. It just comes 
right through the the fees you know the money goes into my bank account i have like a spreadsheet of what they ordered and i get that fulfilled so you're just sleeping and money's pouring imagine in imagine that and it's just in my bed you should like, be scrooge shooting McDuck. pro photo is that the guy <laughs> scrooge mcduck is he the one with money scrooge mcduck That's yeah what i thought okay. it's like just like he's sitting in coins and all <laughs> right, always like why spin. why is it always yeah. coins like you gotta have a lot of coins i know that's true i think some of them are cooter and cooter ants. um sandra says hello from canada loved watching the courses kaylee had on kelby one they were great yes they were oh thank you and they actually still are uh, uh dh dive photo says hi kaylee uh hi. how is your underwater pet photo project going did you get the buoyancy issues sorted so you had some buoyancy issues yeah a little bit yeah we talked about it last time i think this is where we connected last time um hi dh dive photo i'm sorry that i don't know your name i feel like a jerk but um yeah you know what i'm uh, coming back to personal work he asked me about underwater photos well coming back to personal work that water stuff a lot of that has been i mean most of it has been personal work so far really me trying to go into like another dimension of pet photography and i i'm actually the the reason i wrote that blog was because i was reflecting on this past year and how much commercial work I kind of didn't do this past year because I was so busy with other things and I was kind of disappointed in myself for not uh, doing more of that stuff that really is what kind of makes me tick because that's what's important more than anything else. And that water stuff, I, I didn't do anything this past year. And in 2016, I didn't do one water shoot. And I looked back on that and thought, holy crap, I can't believe I didn't do that. Wow. I just invested in this really expensive underwater system and had all these big ideas and I didn't deliver on them. So I was a little disappointed in myself, which is what inspired that blog post. And I said, this year I'm going to do more. So I'm going to Lake Tahoe um, coming up here this summer and I'm going to be going underwater. So let's you know how it goes water. well it's nice it's nice clear water in Tahoe, yes exactly right? very, and that's very why nice. i have to go somewhere like really insanely clear like that all right so we got a question here um we we have a one-year-old rescue pup all right this is from anonymous has a, we have a one-year-old rescue pup that we got about a month ago she <laughs> is hyper in all caps how can i get her to sit you. still for a photo or at least not launch at my camera now you cover this in your class i do yeah so congratulations on your new pup and yeah um the last class that i did it, the Whoops. Uh, working with difficult dogs. Yeah, working with difficult dogs. That covers how to deal with dogs that are extremely hyper. And it goes into like pretty great detail about how you can tie them back to things and then also kind of use treats and toys. Yeah. So check it out. But it mostly uses Benadryl, just so you know. It's a Benadryl <laughs> base. She's, she's always making the dog yeah. sleepy mm -hmm. with Benadryl. Exactly. Uh, ba Bavesh says... Um, I, I have a dog and I'm trying to get pictures in sharp focus, but it gets so difficult as she's always moving when I'm outside. How do I begin to get pictures in focus with the dogs? I just don't seem to know how to do this. I'll bet I know what it is, but let's hear. I bet it's a camera setting. It's a camera setting. Um, I mean, the, the most straightforward answer I have for you, Bavesh, is one one thousandth of a second or faster on your shutter speed. Um, as long as you have enough light, um, in the atmosphere. So just make sure you're going outside before it gets too dark out. Um, twilighty, you know, just do it in, in nice light, but maybe sometime during the golden hour, a couple hours before sunset, one, one thousandth of a second. If you can go one, two thousandth, even as fast as that, that'll help you quite a lot and make sure that you have one single focus point directly on the dog's eye. One more thing. Make sure that you are using a focus mode for things that are moving. Uh -huh. So when you first buy your camera, when you first get your camera, and your camera will come with a steel plate on it like this. No. When you first get your camera, <laughs> your camera is designed to shoot non-moving objects. And what happens is this. I'll just give you an example using this little disc here. So you put your focus points on this, this, uh, this object. And if that object moves, your focus point does not move with the, with the, with the dog in this case mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. When you switch to a, now it depends on what camera you're using. If you're using a Sony or you're using a, a, a Nikon, you're gonna switch to continuous focus mode. It will literally, when it moves, it'll track with it. The dog moves, the focus moves. Otherwise, dog moves, your focus stays right where it was. So, and if you'll move over here, they move a hair, you'll, you'll never get it. You'll get tons and tons of out-of-focus photos. Number one, has to be a thousandth of a second. Mm -hmm. You don't get to a thousandth of a second, you're going to have blur. If it drops to eight hundredth of a second, it'll blur, and you'll be, un you'll be unhappy. But if you don't have the fright focus mode, you can be shooting at five thousandths of a second. You'll e true. Almost every other shot will be out. So, it's a combination of the shutter speed, mm -hmm. 
on putting the sensor on the eye uh -huh. so it's in the focused in the right place because if you get the hair focused on their back it's not going to help you much or the snout yeah and then the other one is you got to have the right focus mode switch your camera to continuous focus on nikon or, or sony if you have a canon it's ai servo you shoot canon 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 yeah you said 1dx yeah so it would be if you're a canon shooter it's ai servo uh, and that is of course named to make it easy to remember all right zoom back <laughs> up to the top we got a we got so many questions it's gonna be like last time we're so many questions and this is just a statement this is so cool to see i remember kaylee and sam telling us three or four years ago about their oh that's about you me like that? oh that's nice about their hero instructor oh How you guys cool now that? i'm gonna cry right you should oh. let's all cry let's all right, that was very sweet minute. all right here <laughs> Yes, have the camera. Like Juan could blur the camera. Like, could you just blur us like tremendously? So if we were crying, nobody would know. We can pretend to cry. Yeah. See if he blurs us way out. Let's see. I'm waiting. Okay. There we go. <laughs> you gotta stop. Like, make the little noise. <laughs> If we keep and doing this, I'll really cry. Yesterday uh, on the plane, I read, I was reading a book, and it was this really innocent, sweet, just easy read. And then all of a sudden, the dog died in the book. <gasps> and then he was sleeping oh, next to me, and I was like, woke him <gasps> up. And Wake then I started up, to make the sob noises, and I was like so embarrassed, and I'm like I'm trying to wipe my eyes, and everyone around me was like, "What's wrong with this girl?" And the, the dog died. It was so sad. I did. It was unexpected. I didn't I, know it was coming. I was on a flight, and I was watching one of the episodes of The Walking Dead, not this season, but last season, mm -hmm. and some horror horrible thing happened yeah. that I did not see coming and I have my headphones on and I'm on the plane and I and I kid you not this thing happened it was one of the most shocking things I've ever seen yeah. in a show one of the most sad and shocking things and I'm sitting there in a the plane and then we're 33,000 feet and I go <gasps> I, I was so stunned it happened. The woman's like, are you okay? Are oh you okay? God, and I'm like, funny. and I took my headphones off. I go, I just saw the worst thing. She's like, I thought you were having a heart attack. I, like, I almost did. It was the worst. It was the saddest thing. I, told, I came home and told my wife, you can never watch The Walking Dead because of that episode. It oh was my gosh. the saddest, most oh. horrible thing I've ever seen on a show in my life. I still love Walking Dead. <laughs> So anyway, I can't wait till February for it comes back and something else horrible will happen. Mm -hmm. Eric wants to know, what type of dog do you think is the hardest to take a photo of? Um, fearful dogs are definitely what I found to be the hardest. More challenging than uh, aggressive dogs um, or dogs that are kind of aloof or dogs that are hyper are all like a walk in the park compared to a fearful dog. Uh, not necessarily a specific breed uh, because that kind of fear just runs through all different dogs. They're also individual. But um, you actually see, I don't mean to, you know, plug my class a million thousand times even though i'm sure this guy doesn't i mind. don't mind one but, little um, bit in my class i actually deal with a very fearful dog in fact the dog that came for the class was even more fearful than we even realized that he was going to be i think with all the camera crew around and stuff he was like whoop and he really shut down and it was like very hard to get a photo yeah. of him so if you check out the difficult dogs class that just came yeah. out i tell you what it, it would you know what would be really awkward right now is if all of a sudden as we're talking an ad started for one of your classes wouldn't that be odd if one of your, like an ad just spontaneously started like um, right now? Imagine that. Where's it going to come from? I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't it be? <laughs> Meredith's not even listening, is she? She's like not even. I may not show the picture now. So anyway. Do we want to show the cat photo? Can Do we, we have the cat we photo? We have the cat photo. All right, let's see the cat photo. Stephanie had asked to see the cat photo. There's the cat photo. Dang, that is a good cat photo. Thank you. That was so that was the cat we took outside, and that was like, <laughs> oh my god, it was fantastic and amazing. And then after 10, 15 minutes, he started to pant, and I go, oh, oh yeah. my god, cats don't Seriously, pant. Seriously, that we is one of the most awesome cat photos I've ever oh, seen. Oh, thank you. That cat that, was a rock star. That cat is a rock star. Do you know what? That cat just. I stayed at my friend's house last night, um, who owns that cat, and that cat just came out of the bedroom and started. Hitting Hissing wildly at me this morning because I was there and, and her owners weren't there. It's a girl. I keep calling it a boy. And she started hissing. I said, you don't even know. You don't remember me. Who took your photo and everything. There's like a big old canvas above their couch of this photo. And she doesn't, this cat doesn't even know who I am. Wow. Oh, well. So <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, Chris has just a statement. Kaylee, you rock. Love your classes. Thank you, Chris. Anonymous says... How is she getting her hair that red? Well, now, that's a natural color, right? Yeah, it happens when you drink too much um, Fruitopia. It is. So this is why we, you know, you, you and you can read about this on CNN. Uh, they've covered it quite a bit. If you drink <laughs> too much Fruitopia, 
This is exactly what Do you guys happened. know what? My roots are showing today. I, this was so last minute that we were going to come on here, and I said, oh, they're going to see my roots. And I said, it's, I'm a real girl. Well, no it one, is what it is. Well, no one saw them until just now. I didn't well, even notice them. Well, come on. Them. They're out there, really out there. All right, let's drink to your roots. All right. Come on. Woo! That's secrets. <laughs> All right. Back with you. Have you ever shot fish or aquatic animals? I'm sure they would no. never cooperate. I have a dream to photograph seals, uh, but no, not yet. It's 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 coming though, right? It's coming. <laughs> All right. Uh, your photos are so clear and crisp, Haley. Uh, what are, what are your preferred settings? And do you do now? Wait a minute, Johan. <laughs> you joined Kelby One. You just did. Go watch your classes. <laughs> we know you, you did. Hey, you know what she shows you, Johan, in the class to be very specific how to make photos that are sharp and clear, and she gives you her preferred settings and shows you her post-processing. In my first like class, class, I did, yep. a, I think, like an hour-long segment on post-processing. Yeah. Um, and it's literally exactly what I do to every single photo cl client or personal work or anything that comes through my Yeah, Yeah, DH Dive Photo, same thing. She shows all her lights and on location and the modifiers yeah. and the whole nine yards. Uh, let's see. Tony Austin says, I started my pet photography business this month and wondered how you first got your name out there. I've been visiting groomers and vets in the area for starters. That's a, it's a good way to start. Um, for sure. Uh, I did a little bit of that too, like kind of networking with local dog related businesses. It works, but it wasn't like the golden ticket for me. It helped a little and opened a few avenues, but nothing like the shelter did. I, I highly recommend getting involved in the local animal shelter or a rescue where you can photograph the adoptable dogs and you're killing two birds with one stone because you're getting, um, these amazing images out there or, or even really good images out there of dogs that need homes and you're making a difference in their lives and then you're also getting your name out there while you're doing it which is brilliant you have a little watermark maybe in the bottom left corner and all of a sudden people are seeing all these dog photos come from you and they know who to call when they need their dog photographed so correct me if i'm wrong but you're advocating the killing of birds is what i got from there you got it <laughs> i heard you're it's my killing favorite thing to, wow okay <laughs> imagine all right no 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 jarek says jarek says Kaylee is a prettier version of Peter Hurley. She can interact with dogs like Peter can interact with people. Now, this is that's a real cut at Peter, I just want to say, because, you know, Peter's not he's not horrible, right? <laughs> right? So it's he's a, got a great head of hair. It's a compliment to to Kaylee and a cut at Peter at the same time. <laughs> but uh, you know, so you can say, say what you want about Peter Hurley, the guy does not advocate killing birds. Uh, she <laughs> says, so, so, so Jared goes on, it's a he. Uh, Kaylee is a prettier version of Peter Hurley. She can interact with dogs like Peter can with people. It's so cool to watch them work. Kaylee, did you have a shoot that didn't go well? And if yes, how did you deal with it? It probably wasn't one. You're dealing with animals, that's tricky, right? Yeah, definitely more than one. But, but recently, right after I got back from filming my last class, how to work with difficult dogs. It was kind of funny, almost karmic, because I had a really challenging shoot. And it was kind of one that I squished in because unfortunately this dog was really, really sick and he had just been diagnosed with cancer and he had oh. maybe the vet felt like a week or two. So oh these people gosh. called me and they were in tears. And so I, I was done shooting for the year, but I said, of course, let's make it happen. Um, what I didn't realize, and they kind of really didn't tell me, is that the dog was quite aggressive um yeah so he was it was the first time maybe one of the first times i've ever felt almost a little uns i hope they don't see this i'll feel so bad it was a beautiful dog but he um and we did well but he was kind of lunging at me at the shoot and lunging at the camera specifically and it was maybe one of the first times that i didn't feel completely safe at a shoot so that was very hard how i dealt with it was i tried to photograph him with my wide angle lens which means i need to be really really close right. if i want that cute bobbly head uh, and i got a few shots off that were really nice and then he started to fixate on my camera and kind of treat it like it was the enemy and it was the camera and he kept biting the camera he got the lens once or twice and, wow. and i was like okay i can't put myself in this situation and anymore so what i did was i trade i really just used almost exclusively the 70 to 200 for the rest of the shoot and stayed really far back and he was totally fine with me when i was far away but if that camera got within like five feet of his face he was lunging at it and trying to bite it um and you know my hand was on it and stuff too so i just had to be it wasn't really me he was going after but i had to be very aware and careful um it was tough you know i have to keep the energy of the owners down to because you don't want them get freaking out and getting upset that he's yeah. biting. So it was a really tough shoot. Oh. But in the end,
then it really worked out and we got some amazing stuff with that. Instead of having too many wide angle shots, we had a lot of those really zoomed in, really beautiful blur in the background, kind of traditional, natural. You're back two shots. and a half miles from the yep, dog. Yep, two and a half miles approximately. Shooting with a 2400. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wayne says, will you be doing a portfolio review session at Photoshop World? Please. Oh. So. Okay, so I can. You should. You want me to? Yeah, you absolutely Let's should. Let's do it. It's official. You should. There you go. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll put the word out. Yeah. All right, because we have we do one-on-one -on -one portfolio reviews, and people sign up, and you you would literally bring your dog photography. You would sit with Kaylee. Now, depending yeah, on what do you that. do, like you, you don't want to bring your dog photos, and they go, oh, you get, you know, <laughs> you get Scott. No, they would make sure that you wound up with with a person oh, cool. that, that matches. So Because we have, like, Moose Peterson is there. So if you oh, do aviation. Oh, oh, yeah. So it's it's all. It's everybody. I mean, all, all, the, all the instructors, like, go in there, and they just give their time one-on-one -on -one to people. I would we, love to do that. We used to do it for free. We used to even charge anything for it, and then people wouldn't show up for their slots. Oh, so yeah. if you charge them anything, everybody yeah, shows up. I hear you. But if it's free, they're just like, oh, I'm going to blow that off. And like, and yeah. it's not. It's the greatest experience because yeah. it's like you're one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, you if you're a dog photographer, imagine being able to sit with you and have you look through and go, you need to do this, you need to do that, fix this, fix that, sell your camera, you're out of the business. <laughs> Um, so uh, Lindsay says, I have never met Kaylee, but you do seem super fun. Thank I would, you. I would totally hang yeah, out. Let's ah. hang out. She says, I, I, I can totally believe people loving you. Do you bring your own collars and leashes, a doggy wardrobe, uh, or whatever the, with the or, or whatever the owners have? You do you, you bring some stuff, right? I do. I do bring like emergency collars and leashes because sometimes people will have really stupid leashes. Not to sound like a jerk, but they'll have like the retractables or ones that are um, have big chunky clips on them. If if you need to Photoshop that off and it's sitting yeah. on the dog's chest and it's this huge clip it doesn't work so i bring my own and then also collars just in case they bring a collar even though i tell the owner multiple times don't bring anything with like a sports team on it or something right because it really takes you out of the image when you have this amazing image and it's kind of like somebody wearing a it says a ravens you know. right like a t-shirt at a, a nice photo shoot that right. says like the gap on it and you kind of get distracted by the words so if they don't really listen and still bring something that's very distracting with weird colors i have like backup solid colored um colors there you go oh great great question from matt who is your favorite social media dog celebrity oh my god i love this question this is such a good question um there is on instagram actually i think they're facebook and instagram but the velvet burritos are two it was two pit bulls uh i think the one of the pit bulls did like move away with its with its dad and so the one that's only featured this these days are mila i think her name is mila uh, i think it's at velvet burritos or maybe she changed it to Velvet Burrito now that there's only one of them. But it is brilliant and beautiful and amazing. And it's an, she advocates a lot for pit bulls. So I love it. Love that dog. I could squish her to bits. <laughs> I could squish her to bits. <laughs> See, now now it's violence there as well. And First birds, the birds. Now it's the puppies. Now it's the puppies. Okay. Uh, we got a question for Scott. And I, I don't have a good answer for this. But I will tell you. I'll tell you what my answer is. You're not going to like it. They said, how do you put an ND filter on the 11 to 24? Have you tried putting an ND? You can't. Well, you no. can in the back, I think. No. You can nah. Ah, there's like a square, like a big square. Like a big square. You can it's... get it. You can get an attachment. There is one company, I think, that makes a holder for a giant ND. Or, and this is going to sound bad, if you have like, um, who makes them? Tiffin and some make big square NDs. Yeah. You can just hold it in front. I suppose, yeah. That's you true. can hold it in front. Yeah. And I've done it with uh, ND grads. And I did that for a long time. Instead yeah. of having a big holder and everything, yeah. I was just literally holding a neutral density gradient filter in front of my camera. Because when you when you can hold it anywhere you want, you can put the horizon line perfectly where you want it. You know how they go? Oh, yeah. They're dark and then they transition. Sure. You can get it right Good. where you want it and just hold it there. And people are like, does that work? Like, it works fine. You know, what? You know it's like. A filter, a yeah. filter in my life. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so, but, but that's, I guess they're asking because we both, we both have the 11 to 24. Isn't which there is, something you can put in the back? There's like a slot for some kind of filter I in the actual back part of the lens. I don't know what is it is. On the 11 to 24? Yeah. I saw it on the manual. No. I'm telling you. I got to go look at mine. It's right Imagine in the other room. I'm telling Scott Calvi. I'm really? probably wrong. Scott. Well, no. I'm like, I had a th <laughs> I, no, I had a 300 that had that. I, I had, no, I, I'm sorry. I had a, a 200 millimeter F2 and it had a slot where you could Isn't slot weird? in yeah. in the back of the can. And there's one in the 11 to 24. One. Give me my 11 to 24. Come on, let's get it, Juan. Juan's like, I don't have the keys. <laughs> All right, so Juan gets on the headset. I'm calling other people in. I'm not doing this crap. Get Linda, get Linda, get it. All right. 
So, uh, all right. So we, we just have a few minutes left. Oh, I guess it's break time. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to wrap up with a few more questions because we've got some good questions here, actually. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about our giveaways, our Lens Pro to Go gift cards, our book giveaway. Kaylee's still here. Sam's just off the set, but he's making some very aggressive moves, much like that dog. He tried to bite the lens. <laughs> He tried to bite the lens. He's lunging at us. He's lunging, <laughs> lunging, lunging at us. Stick around. We'll be right back live here on The Grid with Kaylee Greer. <laughs> He's lunging, lunging. Hi, I'm Kaylee Greer of Dog Breath Photography. When people look through my images, they typically ask me, what in the world? How are all these dogs that you photograph so perfectly well behaved? Are these magical dogs from a magical land? Well, I gotta tell you. No, <laughs> they're not. They're real dogs. We're going to work with multiple dogs and getting them all in one really nice group shot together. We're going to work with a wild, crazy, untamed puppy. We're going to work with a black and a white dog together. We're also going to deal with a fearful, skittish shelter dog. Photographing dogs, as you know, can be incredibly challenging. Oh! Oh, wow! Situations that you would have to deal with in any normal oh, dog photo shoot. Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Difficult dogs. Real world scenarios. Wow! <laughs> it got loud. <laughs> Difficult dogs. Real world scenarios. Join me in my class on KelbyOne.com. Hi, I'm Stella Kramer. I'm a photography consultant and Pulitzer Prize winning photo editor, New York City. In my class, you're going to learn how to edit and sequence your work and make yourself a better photographer in the process. You'll learn how to work with color and black and white and put them together, and you'll learn how to tell the stories that your work needs to tell. I'm Stella Kramer. Check out my class at KelbyOne.com. Hey guys, Christy from Shark Pixel here, and come join me and my shark squad April 20th through 22nd in Orlando for Photoshop World Before I Get Eaten! Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with the amazing Kaylee Greer. And we have with us the greatest wide-angle lens ever made. <laughs> Sam just goes, oh, I got one right here. Well, like, out oh, of, his of course. Well, yeah, who doesn't? Anyway, uh, the reason why this lens is so magical, because it is not only the widest wide-angle lens made, it's probably not only the heaviest wide-angle lens ever mm. made, but it's three thousand dollars. <laughs> it's the most expensive wide-angle yeah. lens ever made. So, um, so the place where this thing goes is the best as we can tell. Oh, we have a shot of it. Juan, you, you're going to put it up, Juan. So Juan's going to show you. But it's somewhere here in the back, right? See There's a little, little square. square. See the little square? Now it's it's just for. Oh, there we go. Ah, wow, well it. done, Juan again. So <laughs> it's a little square, and it says put something here. Now I have no idea how it works. And I did not know that was there. I had no idea. Can I tell you something? I am so impressed that you read the manual. I just got to tell you, I've never read a lens manual in my entire well, life. You write them. I would probably <laughs> uncover all kinds of crazy <laughs> I know, stuff. Right? Yeah, it's. I, I'm just. I'm. I had no idea. But if that's the case, then we got to figure out who makes. Maybe Sam will do some research while we're doing giveaways and do stuff. It. That's right. Do You're it. not just studio audience. Right. You're working. You're getting a paycheck now. Just for this. like ND filter for the Canon 11 to 24. All right. Yeah, figure out who makes that. And this what? is already covered in dog snots on the front. Little snots. Oh, little dog little. snots. That's lovely. That's going to happen. All right. We <laughs> it's going to happen. So a couple of comments here. Uh, Chris says, uh, Kaylee watched your class, was totally blown away. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Steve says, uh, do you prefer photographing older senior dogs or younger ones? Or do you have a Aww, preference? Um, for different reasons. I love them both so much. Uh, older dogs always have a legacy that they've kind of built with their families and everything. And so a lot of times it's quite a bit more emotional to photograph the older ones since, you know, their time's limited. Um, but of course, the younger ones give you like the bouncing, bobbling, wacky stuff that I love so much about dogs. So it's a toss up. But that's a good question. The older dogs, do you ever just trip them to be mean? Ever do that? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jennifer. Imagine. Imagine. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Your dog just fell. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Jennifer has a very good question. Who are your inspirations? Oh, my gosh. That is 
such an amazing question. Ah, uh, well, I'm sitting next to one of them, and I'm oh, not trying to say no, that just to kiss butt. Kind, I'm not kissing butt. I swear. No, I have no problem with you kissing butt. Really, okay, none right, whatsoever. Fair enough. But, amazing. Just... But I think I think what they're really asking, I think what Jennifer's really asking is like, like, are there dog photographers that you look up to? Um, like, oh, my favorite dog photographer is Bob Johnson. Yeah, you know, it's a kind of a small little industry. There's not too too many, but I will say that um, there is a gentleman who a lot of people probably know called William Wegman, uh, who did the Weimariners. He, I mean, I think in the 80s was his kind of okay. real prime time with that. And he did this really famous series of Weimariners. Um, his own dogs, I think, were Weimariners. And he's incredible. But, you know, outside of dog photography, uh, Greg Heisler is oh. a huge, huge inspiration of mine. And I get to meet him You got him to at meet him at Photoshop World, World right? And I'm sitting there Gregory's talking with him, hanging awesome. out. I'm like, no, oh, they're just hanging out with Gregory Is he the nicest guy ever? Oh, my God. It's kind of outrageous how nice he is. He's, he's, I love Gregory. It's outrageous. He's just, just one of the most talented guys in our entire industry. One of the smartest guys. You know how, how you know he's really smart? When Jay Maisel tells you, God, Gregory Heisler, that guy is smart. Right? I mean, Jay, well, the first time I met Jay, he spent about half the first half hour talking about how great Gregory Heisler is. When Jay Maisel looks up to you, you're like, that's wow, incredible. it yeah. is. I mean, so um, so any other inspiration? Are there any modern inspirations? So that's your historical inspiration. Um, Anybody like, so who do you follow? Who's a dog photographer? Dog, you know what I mean? Who is a dog photographer that you follow like on Instagram? That's okay. Okay. Um, there is somebody who I just adore and we've never met in person yet, but I hope we get to, uh, her name is Elka. I think her last name is Vogelsang. I think that's how you say it. Um, and she is, oh, she's going to make fun of me so much when I don't remember where she lives. Russia somewhere. Elka, that sounds Elka. more like St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri. She um, but she does, Missouri. A, she does a lot of really incredible, like um, distorted wide angle um, photos of dogs, but mostly in studio. Uh, so much character. Her All work right. is brilliant. And uh, and then Seth Castile is the guy who did the underwater dogs, fully underwater diving kind of action. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's he really kind of paved a, the way for some really special, amazing, incredible stuff in the dog photography world. So I'm a big fan of hey, his. Hey, Susan says... That Peter Hurley agrees that you are a prettier version of him. Oh, Peter Hurley! <laughs> <laughs> All right, David asks, uh, "Hi, Kaylee. Is there any is there is any particular dog collar leash easier to erase with Photoshop?" Um, like the yes. clear dog uh, collar. They have like a well, actually, it's like line. They use it for training dogs. It's a very specialty, like dog training. I forget what it's called, but it's a very thin line. Uh, um, and usually they're like orange or something, so it's easier to remove. I don't actually use them myself, but a lot of pet photographers use them. Hey, I just want to plug somebody for inspiration. Absolutely. Real quick. Um, two people. Ilona House from Scruffy Dog Photography. If you've never seen her work, somebody Google it. It's incredible. She, Say her name again. Il Ilona House. Ilona uh, House. Yeah, Ilona. And then H-A-U-S is her last name, but it's Scruffy Dog Photography. And real quick, Frank Dorhoff is a very big inspiration of mine, too, who is not a dog photographer, but a incredible uh, people portrait fashion. Yeah, he is. I don't know what you'd call him, but he's something. And he's so, very tall. So Justin, yes, he is. <laughs> Justin wants to know, have you ever used a platypod on dogs? Uh, I have not yet. I'm working on it. Can I tell you something? <laughs> we are going to send you a platypod. Yeah? Yeah, we'll send you one. Yeah? Actually, we can send you home with one. Oh, my gosh. That's we so can exciting. Send, we're going to send you home with a platypod so Pro Max. Let me try it then. I'll try it. Well, you can just take it. No, oh, you can have it. So it's like your gift for being on the on the grid. What? Right. They're our sponsor. They're really they're like the awesome. Gift. Anyway. Can you believe it? I didn't think anyone no. wanted them, and now here I no, am. No, no, we're going to give somebody else one, too. I'm not giving you that. No, would be, I know, but I get one. That would be so mean, yeah, right? Well, like, I eh. just decided that we're going to take. <laughs> so don't know. We're going to give away a Platyprod Pro Max today, and we're going to give you one just because you're you. So we'll, we'll, we'll have one for you. We'll make it happen. Thank you. Gosh, that's we're wonderful. Just, uh, you made my day. Well, there you go. Thank you. All right, so let's see. Um... Say, uh, Douglas says, Kaylee, I watched your difficult dog class and loved it, and I love you. Keep up the amazing work. I love you. Right back. Do you know what? I know this guy. This is, like, my best friend in the okay. world. Okay. He loves you. Doug Young all is right. my best friend in the world. All right. <laughs> Johan. Yeah, all, all questions from Johan, by the way, now that he finally joined Kelby One, get answered or get asked <laughs> on the show. There was a lot of times I'd see questions from Johan. I'd go, he's not a member. I'm not going to answer. But now he's in. <laughs> if he puts a question it. up, I put it up. Uh, it's what is your favorite dog name? Um, Mitch. 
I was photographing at the shelter once, and there was this decrepit little three-legged chihuahua Aww. who was so cute, and his eyes were all kind of clouded over, and he was old, and he was scraggly and gray, and his name was Mitch. <laughs> You're like, man, that fits. And I died. It was the cutest name ever. I, mi- I just, re- I'll remember him forever. And my dog has a human name, too. His name is Joshua, and he's the love of my life, so he's up there, too. Oh. All right, Chris Wiley asks, can you come to Photoshop World just for one part? In other words, can you come just for the portfolio uh, review? Well, Chris, we, we do sell a one-day pass, but, but there, there are two issues here. Number one, when people find out that Kaylee is going to be doing portfolio reviews, hers are going to be sold out like within four seconds. Number two, I can tell you from personal experience, we've heard it a million times. People that buy a one day pass to Photoshop world regret it because they go, now that I'm here and I see what it's like, I should have bought the three day pass. But then once you're there, if you have to go buy like the other two days, it's so expensive that you're like, you'll be like, you'll, you'll kill yourself. You'll be so upset if you go for one day, cause you're going to realize this isn't, this is way different than I expected. I wish I'd been here for three days. Oh my gosh. And just walked by me was Kaylee Greer and you pass out so it's that kind of thing hey kaylee what is the best aperture to shoot dogs is f 2.8 too shallow if only there was a course kaylee where you explained your camera settings but in the meantime let's let's answer this one mark do you know what i shot that um that cover photo on national geographic National I was Geo. shot at 2.8. 2.8, um, and boom! And actually, there's four dogs in it, so it's not too shallow. Nope. But if you're going to be real close to a dog, and then you're trying to shoot at like 2.8 or under, um, then you sometimes have the problem where the snout's in focus and not the eyes because they have that depth in their face. They do. So just um, if you're going to be close, you bump it up. But a lot of times, honestly, I'm at 1.2, 1.4. That's when I'm shooting natural. If I have l- strobes, then a lot of times I'm up around f. 14-ish. All right. Well, we've got one more question I'm going to answer. We're, we're wrapped up, but I, I, want to, I want people to know where to follow you. First, what is your Instagram name? Oh, um, it's Dog Breath Photography. It's pretty straightforward. At Dog Breath Photography. What is your Twitter name? <laughs> Good question. I think it's Dog Breath Photography. I believe it is. <laughs> All right. And you're on Facebook? Yep. Um, and that's Facebook.com slash Dog Breath Photo. And I where, think. And oh my where God, can guys, they find your work know. online? www.dogbreathphoto.com. Does it look anything like that? It looks a little like that, yep. That is I an recognize awesome that. photo. Thank you. All right. That's my baby. My well, I'm going to go until my favorite one comes up. Okay. That's a really great one. Thank you. Awesome. These are such that great shots. That guy was like cuckoo look bananas. Look at that dog. That dog is so happy. There's my underwater. Look I don't know why that oh, one's that watermarked like and nothing else is. Awesome. There's Maggie. Look at that. That's just a Jen's dog. Is Oh, look at that. There's one of the half underwater. Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. Hero dog. Wow. <laughs> that's Nat Geo. There it is. That's Nat Geo. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. Point eight. Two point eight. I shot 2. That eight right there. These are such. Rome. Rome. Really? Come on. <laughs> Was one of the pictures taken in London in front of St. Uh, yes. Uh, St. Paul's Cathedral? It was no. Taking it, I took one in front of Big Ben, like that whole area. Oh, yeah. Um, Big but Ben. I don't think I've actually posted that one anywhere yet. I'm working on it. Oh, okay. I also well, photographed the a dog like... on a gondola in Venice. Did that you? was amazing. And I haven't posted that either yet because I'm terribly behind and everything I have to do. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, let's do some giveaways. Yay. So we have some giveaways. Giveaway. Um, we're giving away two Lens Pro to Go gift certificates. $50 off. And uh, it'll, I'll tell you where, where to go here in just a second. But this, we're going to give two of these away. Not one. Watch. We're going to both hold them. Simultaneous gift holders. You can go, you know what you can go rent there? An 11 to 24. That's right, but and you know, not with 50 bucks. Probably not 50 <laughs> bucks. No, for Sorry. a $3,000 lens, probably not. But what's going to happen is this. You're going to get it. You go, how the heck do you put that ND filter in? Sam knows. Did, did you find it? Uh, yeah, the Kodak Rattan 2 filters. All right, so it's the Kodak Rattan 2 filters, and you actually cut them to fit the back of the camera, and it fits in there? In theory. theory in theory. <laughs> Sam's like, in theory. Wow, I'm I'm impressed. Thank you. I did not know that. I did not know that. That is weird. We also have the <laughs> Photoshop Elements 15 book right here for digital photographers. 15. It's so new. Comes out Friday. We'll still send it to you because we care. And right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off so you can see it a little better. A Platypod Pro Max. Right here. This bad boy. You know you're not getting the the airhead ball head. No, that's from three leg thing, but it's the plate. And see the ball head just screws right into it. So I'll give you the actual thing that you're gonna win. There, it's the plate. 
incredibly, incredibly hard. This, the, 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 the Pro Max, this, this holds my 1DX. Ah. And like, like a, at whatever I want, I could put a 24 to 70. I, I put 11 to 24. I mean, this yeah. is like the serious stuff. And you know how much it tips over your camera? None. That's why I love them. Did you know I won one of those today? You won one of those I'm today. I'm so excited. All right. <laughs> All righty. So uh, Donna wants to know if my Photoshop book is good for dinner. I think you mean my Elements book, my Elements for – well, it's called Photoshop Elements. Uh, yeah, it starts at square one. It is actually designed not for experts. It is designed for people who are new – to it. So I hope you win it, Donna. So make sure you enter the contest. All right. Two things. Number one, today I did a little post over at lightroomkillertips.com called five little known Lightroom shortcuts. And I'll bet there are some that you will not know. I bet there are some that you might know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they're little known. Like everybody goes, well, I knew one of them or I knew two, but you know, anyway, it's worth going to check out. Go to lightroomkillertips.com. There it is. Look at this spiffy graphic. That's beautiful. Right. I know. I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. So there they are. Okay, next. Um, Frank Durhoff, the amazing Frank Durhoff. You mentioned him earlier. He is having a workshop in New Jersey. Why is the workshop in New Jersey? Because Frank apparently doesn't know much about the United States. <laughs> Nobody would ever choose to have a workshop in New Jersey on purpose. But Frank <laughs> did. You know why? I'll guarantee you Frank heard it's close to New York and all. And it's like, can I tell you something? I read something about New Jersey the other day. What was it? It was the unfriendliest city in the United or in the world. I think worldwide it was the sounds voted right. unfriendliest place was Newark, New Jersey. That sounds right. When you drive into New Jersey, like you can smell it like immediately oh. as soon as you drive in. I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I it's just I was driving one time down to Florida and you have to cross through New Jersey to get to New York and yeah. and it smelt and I said, "Where are we?" and Sam said, "New Jersey." So that's where that information comes from. Wow. Uh, but I, hey, that wasn't me, so don't write in. Guys, but I will don't write say in. This. I'm sorry. So this would be, let's just go and let's just say that I went to uh, Amsterdam or I went to the Netherlands, all right? And I didn't know what the worst city in the, in, in the and I booked a, uh, a, a workshop there. Mm. That's what would happen if for Frank. Frank doesn't really mm. know that New Jersey is not the ideal place. In fact, what's interesting about New Jersey is it is surrounded by by some of the greatest places in America. Mm -hmm. But he somehow said, I'm going to Jersey. <laughs> He'll probably get killed. He'll probably die in Jersey. <laughs> I didn't a lot that. of people do. See? A lot of people do. They're floating <laughs> down the river there in Jersey. I remember like my son was considering going to school there. And I was like, <laughs> Kim Doty, hey, stop hating on New Jersey, Scott. Kim's from New Jersey. What exit? Oh, sorry, that's a Jersey joke. Anytime you meet someone from Jersey, they, they identify where they're from by, oh, I'm, I'm at exit 14C. It's that kind of it's that kind of state. <laughs> All right. And you know what else, too? They call themselves the Garden State. Let me tell you what. Somebody in marketing for New Jersey chose that as their thing. Anyway, so uh, what were the name of the filters you mentioned again, Sam? Can you give us one more time? It's the Kodak Rattan. It's W R A T T E N 2, the number 2. So Kodak Rattan 2 filters. And, uh, there you go. All right. And uh, Matt says, I'm from the Northeast. Making fun of Jersey is a regional <laughs> pastime. All right. Mark, uh, Mark Harrison says, another great episode of The Grid. Rock on. And Alan Hess says, always a great time having Kaylee on the show with Sam in the background. Thanks, Alan. Well, Kaylee, thank you so oh, thank much. thank you. And let's, let's have it. Well, this is to you. Cheers uh, to you for being on the show. Thank you, thank you very much. Me. It is always a pleasure. Now, Kaylee, I want to just, I'm just going to put this out there. In a few weeks, and maybe as many as maybe as few as two, we have a completely brand new set for the grid. Oh yeah! And new graphics, Ooh. new music. It's going to be a whole new grid. Wait, does Same. this make these beauties obsolete? There, yeah, these are the last couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, now that we finally got them, um, <laughs> but we have. I saw the new logo and the new of uh, the like the the opening title package that was designed by Layton and our. It, it's cool, awesome, and it's a whole new look. And the set is actually going to be over there. And so I met with the set builders this morning, and we've got – I don't want to tell you the whole thing. It's, it's going to be surprise. bad. But I just want to let you know that you were invited back once oh, the new set you. is. Anytime you want to – Anytime you're within 500 miles of us, come and check it out because you, you would really fit in the new set. It would oh, like, yay. You would go like, oh, sense. I'm born to be on this set. Yeah, bring Maggie. Can we bring Maggie? Maggie's probably actually here. So mm -hmm. Maggie uh, is at the groomers like during the day, okay. and then she comes here in the afternoon, and she runs around excidedly. She's so good. it's likely that Maggie the Wonder Dog is actually out just on the in the oh. offices over there. Oh, All that's right. Exciting. Back to Frank Dorhoff. I mentioned he had a workshop in New Jersey. Go to frankdorhoff.com 
slash site, S-I-T-E, slash new dash jersey. Thanks for the easy URL, Frank. Frankdurhoff.com slash site slash new dash jersey slash wish I hadn't chosen it. All right. And uh, <laughs> Cameron says, thanks again, folks. Great show as always. Douglas says uh, to Kaylee, thank you for being a ray of sunshine. Aww. And on those notes, thank you guys very much. Thank, thank you. Thanks for I do have to show real quickly because we never get to show a picture of Meredith. We have a picture That's of right. Meredith. Now, there's a little story behind it, too. Let me grab it real quick. It might take me just a second to find it. I know I have to go to video. It's worth it. It's worth it, hanging it around for. All right. So let me control room two. All right. So let me get it open, and, and I have a story. Aww. Isn't that nice? I have a story. Come on. That's beautiful. Okay, it is. It okay. is. But here's sure. what we got to say. This, so she's posing with a guy in this photo, but it is not her boyfriend. <laughs> so rest assured, this, I promise you, this is, oh, I don't need to go to that one. I need to go to uh, video control. This is not her boyfriend. Do not worry. So here we go. You got to show it. You got to keep it up for more than two seconds, please. Oh. All right. And that don't worry, it's not her boyfriend. So Isn't she stunning? For all the single guys out there, it's actually her fiance. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Zing. All right. So anyway, there's Mayor. She's over in the control room. Thank you, Meredith. She put it up for a surprisingly long amount of time that for was Meredith. Good. That was like six seconds, like compared to the nanosecond that the other one was up. But isn't that a nice shot? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yes. And 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 not only is Meredith, you know, she is she's a great controller and she directs the show and she does all kinds of editing. A lot of the classes that you see on Kelby One, she did the editing for, but uh, she's a very, very nice person. Very but we're very happy for her. She's got, got a great guy, and um, and you don't get her. So it's she's she's off it. the market <laughs> for. So let me just say that to like Johan, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> that does not come with your membership. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody much. Big love from Poland from Jarek. <laughs> and Justin says thanks for being on the show, Kaylee. We'll Aww, see you guys thanks. next thanks time. The next time we see Kaylee, we'll be on the new set. All right. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Bye. Do you say bye at the end? Of Thank <laughs> you.